Primary glaucoma. Primary glaucoma is classified on the basis of age of onset as primary congenital and primary adult glaucoma. Primary congenital glaucoma. It's the most common glaucoma of childhood. It has an autosomal recessive inheritance pattern and occurs from birth till three months of life. It's associated with consanguineous marriages and children present with buthalmus. The classical triad of this condition consists of lacrimation, photophobia, and blepharospasm. A child can also show features of decreased vision, myopia, and strabismus. Classical signs of congenital glaucoma are Hobstriae, hazy edematous cornea, and large eye. Increase intraocular pressure measured by Perkins tonometer. Treatment Beta blockers are the first line of treatment. Goniotomy is the surgery of choice for clear cornea. Other options for hazy cornea are trabeculotomy plus trabeculectomy. Primary adult glaucoma. It can be of two types, open angle glaucoma and angle closure glaucoma. Primary open angle glaucoma. It's known as a silent thief of sight. It's usually seen in colored races, people with thin corneas, myopes, increasing age, trabecular meshwork fibrosis, myosinin gene, and optineurin gene predisposes to open angle glaucoma. Other diseases that predispose to primary open angle glaucoma are diabetes, hypertension, and Graves' disease. Aqueous humor is a fluid produced by the eye. It provides nutrition to the eye as well as maintains the eye in a pressurized state. Aqueous humor flows from the ciliary body into the anterior chamber out through a spongy tissue at the front of the eye called the trabecular meshwork and into a drainage canal. In open angle glaucoma, fibrosis of trabecular meshwork occurs leading to the blockade. Max resistance is offered by juxta canicular meshwork. The patient remains asymptomatic. The only complaint is a change in presbyopic glasses every six to eight months, and dark adaptation time increases. It's painless, with no corneal edema and no halos. There is a gradual loss of vision, and most patients present only when tunnel vision is present that marks the end stage of glaucoma. Primary angle closure glaucoma. It's less common than open angle glaucoma, but has three times more risk for the development of bilateral blindness. It occurs when the iris mechanically obstructs the trabecular meshwork and ciliary body, leading to increased intraocular pressure. The most noted pathogenesis is the pupillary block caused by a mid-dilated pupil. There are three types of angle closure glaucoma, clinically, acute, subacute, and chronic. In acute angle closure glaucoma, there is a sudden rise of intraocular pressure of less than 40 millimeters of mercury due to a total block of angle. It's not self-resolving and is usually seen in middle-aged women of Asian origin, hypermetropes, and emotional distress. It's mostly a late-night attack with mid-dilated, 6 to 8 millimeters. Intraocular pressure increases three to four times within 30 minutes, and patients present with severe pain, sudden loss of vision, colored halos, headache, nausea, and vomiting. Eye shows conjunctival injection, steamy cornea, vertical oval mid-dilated, non-reacting pupil, and the eye is stony hard. Vodge Triad gives information about the past episode of acute angle closure glaucoma, the presence of iris atrophy, pigment dispersion, and glaucum flecken suggest a past attack. In subacute or intermittent angle closure glaucoma, intraocular pressure rises suddenly. There are mild symptoms. It's self-limiting and keeps recurring. Chronic angle closure occurs over a gradual course of time and the patient mostly stays asymptomatic. Diagnosis. Angle assessment is done by gonioscopy. It's the gold standard technique. Van Herrick's technique. 
peripheral depth of anterior chamber, less than one-fourth normal cornea thickness, is suggestive of angle closure. Ultrasound Biomicroscopy Colored halo of angle closure glaucoma is differentiated from cataract by the FinCham test. In glaucoma, halos don't split upon being tested with a disc, whereas cataract halo split up and unite. Visual Field it's the space visible to the human eye without moving the eye from a central point. It's measured by a perimeter. The gold standard perimeter is Humphrey's perimeter. Perimeters are of two types, kinetic and static. Kinetic's perimeter are Goldman's perimeter, Lister's perimeter, and Bajurum's tangent screen. Static perimeters are automated Humphrey's perimeter, Newer perimeters are short wavelength automated perimetry and frequency doubling perimetry. The various visual field defects in glaucoma seen on perimetry are paracentral scotoma, it's the earliest visual field defect, bajerm scotoma, it's a very characteristic field defect of glaucoma, bajerm's arcuate area is most susceptible to glaucoma, nasal step. It's also a characteristic field defect of glaucoma. Cetal scotoma. It's a sickle-shaped extension of blind spot. Bearing of blind spot. Arcuate scotoma. And temporal wedge defect. Most scotomas are arc-shaped and follow horizontal meridian. Glaucoma scotomas are negative scotomas. Characteristically, supranasal fields are first destroyed and temporal vision is destroyed at the last. Optic disc. Normally, the optic disc has clear margins with reddish-pink color and a diameter of 2.57 to 2.81 square millimeter. There are two central retinal arteries and two central retinal veins. Normally, neural retinal rim is widest inferiorly and narrowest temporally. It follows the inferior, superior, nasal and temporal rule. Inferior more than superior, more than nasal, more than temporal. In glaucoma, the neural retinal rim is gradually decreased. Cup disc ratio is more than 0 0.7 in glaucoma, and once the cup disc ratio becomes 1, neural retinal rim thinning is completely lost, and this state is known as glaucomatous optic atrophy. Optic disc is examined with a slit lamp and 90 diopter lens. Other lenses used are Kruby lens. It's a plano concava lens with 5806 diopter power and Goldman 3 mirror lens having 60 diopter power. In glaucoma, optic disc undergoes some changes such as inferior, superior, nasal, temporal rule broken, cup to disc ratio increases, asymmetric cup to disc ratio, pallor and optic disc, splinter hemorrhages, lamellar dot sign, bayonetting, nasalization of optic disc, parapapillary atrophy, and optic atrophy. Management of primary glaucoma. Medical management. There are two ways of managing glaucoma medically. One, by increasing outflow via the uveoscleral route. This is done by using cholinergic agonist and prostaglandin analogs. And second, by decreasing production using beta blockers and carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. Adrenergic agonist. These drugs work by a dual mechanism. That is, they decrease production as well as increase uveoscleral outflow. Cholinergic agonist. Drugs include pilocarpine, carbacol, and echothypate. These drugs work by increasing trabecular outflow by causing ciliary muscle contraction and opening the angle up. It's important to know that pilocarpine decreases the uveoscleral outflow. Side effects of pilocarpine include uveitis, pseudomyopia, punctual stenosis, retinal detachment, and cataract. Beta blockers. These drugs work by decreasing production significantly. Non-selective beta blockers used are timolol, levobunolol, and cardiolol.
Selective beta blockers used are Bataxolol. Beta blockers are contraindicated in asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and arrhythmias. Adrenergic agonist. Drugs include epinephrine or dipovephrine. These drugs work by dual mechanism, that is, they decrease production as well as increase uveal scleral outflow. Side effects of these drugs are systemic as well as ocular. Systemic side effects include sweating, palpitation, tachycardia, hypertension, nervousness, and tremors. Ocular side effects include pupil dilatation, stinging, and blepharoconjunctivitis. Alpha-2 agonist. Drugs include brimomidine, which acts by decreasing productions as well as increasing uveal scleral outflow. It's important to note that this drug is contraindicated in children due to apnea and death. Apriclonidine. It's known to cause tachyphylaxis and blepharoconjunctivitis. Carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. It works by decreasing production. Drugs include acetazolamide, which is a systemic drug, andorzolamide and brinzolamide, which work topically and remain the drug of choice in children. Side effects of acetazolamide are hypokalemia, acidosis, chronic renal and hepatic failure. Prostaglandin F2 alpha analogs. These drugs work exceptionally well by increasing uveal scleral outflow. Commonly used drugs are latinoprost, bimetoprost, travaprost. These are the drugs of choice for open angle glaucoma and normal tension glaucoma. Being most potent, they have a few side effects as well, such as uveitis, iris hyperchromia, and and trichomegaly. Hyperosmotics. These are indicated in sudden increased intraocular pressure and are not used for longer durations. Drugs like mannitol are given. It's the drug of choice for acute angle closure glaucoma. Isosorbide is oral hyperosmotic of choice. Surgical management of glaucoma. Various surgical procedures available for the treatment of glaucoma include Argon laser trabeculoplasty. Procedure. To begin the procedure, first anesthetics eye drops are administered to numb the eyes. Then, you'll be seated in front of the slit lamp microscope. While looking through a microscope, a special contact lens is placed on the eye that will be used to focus the high intensity light over a laser beam precisely at the trabecular meshwork. This helps clear the blockade and reduces eye pressure. Trabeculectomy. It is also called as filtration surgery. In this procedure, a conjunctival pocket is created and may be treated with mitomycin or other anti-metabolites for a few minutes. These drugs are used to prevent scarring of the operation site. A half-thickness flap is then made in the sclera and is dissected all the way to the clear cornea. A block of scleral tissue, including part of the trabecular meshwork and Schlem's canal, is then removed to make a hole into the anterior chamber of the eye. As the iris may plug up this hole from the inside, a piece of the iris may be removed at this time. This is called iridectomy. The scleral flap is then sutured loosely back in place. This allows adjustment of the aqueous flow in order to achieve target pressure and avoid the complication of having too low intraocular pressure. The conjunctiva is sewn back in place to cover the area. After surgery, aqueous humor drains into a filtering area called a bleb under the conjunctiva. Since the surgery is usually performed near the top of the eye, the bleb can easily be concealed behind the upper eyelid. Peripheral iridectomy, laser iridotomy. Before the procedure drops are placed in the eye to constrict the pupil, then using a precisely focused beam of laser light, a tiny hole is created in the iris. This hole acts as an alternate channel through which fluid inside the eye will flow if the usual pathway becomes blocked. This hole will not affect the vision. Neodymium doped, yttrium aluminum garnet laser iridotomy.
It's a better option for primary angle closure glaucoma. Glaucoma drainage devices. These are also known as aqueous shunts. These devices are sutured onto the sclera between the lateral and superior rectus. These are used in refractory glaucoma cases. Devices used are a mod glaucoma valve, multinal implant, Krupen's valve, and Bearvelt's valve. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.